It is time for the first premium live event post WrestleMania, and we are here to give our preview and predictions. It's WWE Backlash, but it should be called WWE Backwards because that is the direction the company's been going ever since WrestleMania 40. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. And gone are the good old days where Backlash was a really good pay per view, and you used to get the aftermath of WrestleMania, you used to get WrestleMania matches on repeat it actually was so much like wrestlemania that for a period of time they called this premium live event slash pay-per-view wrestlemania backlash but this is nothing like wrestlemania they've got as far away from the grandest stage of them all that they possibly can we're being fed a bunch of jobber matches five matches in total first of all i don't know how there's only five matches on this card second of all only Raw is Raw is only contributing one of those matches, and it's a three-hour show. How can we have a premium live event where Raw is only having one match on that show when you've got three hours of the red brand every week? What the fuck have they been doing? How is there no match from Raw other than Damian Priest versus GSO, which is not a world title match, by the way. It's like mid-card at best. We've got a question. Big nose, Triple H. Look at the pass. Goldberg Rock. You've got Edge, Triple H, Cena. You've got Triple H, Michaels, Benoit. You've got Triple H against Hogan. You've got Triple H against The Rock. There's a lot of Triple H in there, but you know what? The guys have good fucking matches, so why can't he write good matches? Good matches, good ideas, good storylines, good promos. Hell, we'd even take good tweets at this point, but even they get deleted, so I don't know what is happening here. But it's a black, it's a backlash with five... What's the point of even going over to France? No. For yeah. five fucking matches. Hold up the white fly like the French do, may as well. I mean, does that mean every match is going to go about half an hour here? Oui, I, oui. I, I certainly hope not. Oui, oui. I, I just don't understand, though, how there's one match from Raw. The three-hour show. See, the it's, it's almost like they've went back to brand-exclusive pay-per-views here. I mean, they probably will uh, whip out more matches. But again... What, with zero build? Yeah, well, that's the doubt of way. How garbage is that? It like, is garbage. I'm not going to deny that, but that's what they do. That's what they tend to do, and... It's what they will do. I so, can guarantee you that Sami Sane, um, what's that guy called? Reed. Bron Bronson Reed. And uh, Gable will probably become a match. Why not announce that on Raw? Why, yeah, why not? But they didn't. We're, we're, we're less than 24 hours away for this pay per view airing. Why would, you, why would you announce that now? Why can't Roman Reigns return on the show? <laughs> Hold on, you're asking too much. And I'm asking too much. You're asking for that overrated part time jobber to show up? Fuck no. Anyway, right, we're going to preview it here. We're going to start with the, the worst match on the. Well, we're just going to start from. Well, it says John Cena and Charlotte have been spotted in France. Oh, -ho! my brother More testified. Of it John, Wait, less of it Charlotte. does John not really. Does John not tend to appear in the overseas ones? He does, that's what I'm thinking. He appeared in the, the Cardiff one, didn't he? And he appeared in the Australia one? And in the UK. Money in the bank. So, whenever WWE goes abroad, John Cena, you can't see him. He tends to sneak on the plane and... You can't see me. He gets... Well, you know what? If we're going to get a John Cena match, I, I take it all back. We're not, though, are we? No, we're probably not. Right. Open the match. Kabuki Warriors versus Bianca Belair and Jade Cargo. Thoughts on this uh, storyline? Or can you even call it... A Let's not, it's, it's a feud at best. It's shit. A story, a storyline has a story. I am sick to death of people talking about story. There is no, where's the storylines in WWE? Yeah, for all the guys that cry, oh, you guys bury women's wrestling, you know what, see for the next two minutes, I'm going to bury it. But see, after that, I'm going to bury all the fucking men as well. So don't worry about it. Right, there's no storyline here. Basically, what we've got going is, you're black, you're black, we're going to put you in a tag team. That's pretty much it. Black woman, we muscles, black woman, we muscles. Athletic black woman, athletic black woman. We're going to team you up. You're going to take on the Kabuki Warriors. That's it. We haven't seen... And, and how can you even really have a story here? You've got the cringiest person, arguably, arguably of all time, in Bianca Belair. You've got two women that can barely speak a lick of English in um, Asuka and Carrie Sane. And then, I mean, Jade Cargo, we've yet to really see what she can do, so... I mean, this is just four women thrown together. Tag team titles on the line. I am going to go with the Kabuki Warriors winning this one. I know people are saying there's no chance that's going to happen. Yes, if Bianca... But even people are saying Jade can't turn on Bianca because this needs to happen at WrestleMania. Why? 
So wait, they have to be friends for like eight months just so they can have a turn? What, what needs to happen at WrestleMania? Those two serve catering? Come on. Uh, at least to have a match at Mania. Why does every match need to be reserved now for Mania? There's no one on this card that even belongs on a Mania. Look at the matches you got back in the day. Fucking Hogan wrestling Taker on a Judgment Day. Triple H Hogan NWO backwards. against... Austin and Raw. <laughs> yeah, they're telling you that, oh no, Jade Cargo, Bianca, that's too good for even SummerSlam. You need to wait to meet. Fuck away off, man, seriously. Anyway. But it, see, see, unless, like, The Rock coming back, nothing's too good for me. Anyway. I don't even think Bianca, Jade Cargo's worthy of SmackDown. Yep, so there you go. Anyway, thoughts? Who's winning? I don't, I, I, I couldn't give a shit who's winning, man. That's the problem when I was previewing SmackDown. I look at like big, strong boys. Look at some big, strong women. I don't give a fuck. So, I'll go with the big, strong women. Who would actually win in a fight between Jade Cargo and Bianca Belair versus the uh, Catch Club can? The new Pete Catch Republic? Uh, uh, that's the one, eh? That's the one. I don't know. Two big, strong boys against two men. <laughs> two black men. It's like white chicks, but fucking reversed. <laughs> uh, are you allowed to do white chicks, but reversed? Probably not. Can't no. not be blackface, no. It would be. Black chicks? Uh-huh. Black dudes? <laughs> right, let's just move on here. <laughs> That's plenty. We'll have, some, we'll have some more on coming on the the, ch- the comments, accusing us or something. Uh, right, who are you going for here? Go the Kabuki Warriors. The Kabuki Warriors. I don't know, we, we both uh, went against... I, I think you should go with the other team just so we don't get accused or something. We're going to pick up uh, Bel Air and... What's her name? Cargo. Like a fucking roll of sushi with chopsticks and eat them. <laughs> so let's, let's move on. Uh, I agree. Kabuki Warriors, I think, will win. Will it be a clean win or will it be because Jade turns on Bianca or what? I just don't care. Fair enough. No, but right, what's the next pair of you? Jeddah? No, they're not going to do it, no. Queen of <laughs> wrestling bin bags? I know, right, right. It's hard could, to show off a, a physique when you're wrestling in a big bin Could bag. be. Why couldn't they both get to the final, the Queen of the Ring? That could be it. Anyway, right, let's move on to the next match. It's another tag team match. We've got Kevin Owens and Randy Orton taking on the Bloodline without... I Roman... think this is the match of the night. I think this is the feud of the night. I think this is the best thing going in WWE, which tells yeah, you... Yeah, but you know what? It's Drew McIntyre and Punk. It's not... They haven't got physical, really. This is, But this is the Bloodline minus Roman Reigns and the fucking Usos. Yeah. It's a guy that's lost 35 matches in a row and a guy that's only been in the door two weeks. He hasn't won a match. <laughs> I mean, like, what are we doing here? The guy's 42. Now, everyone has seen the Bloodline will 100% win this. I don't know where they've got that from. They need to win it, though. <laughs> well, they do, but, I mean, are you confident? No, I'm would not you con- Would you stick money on it? No. I'm, I'm done with sticking money on things, but, I mean, honestly... <laughs> Look, no, like, no as much as I think the bloodline is overrated, I'm not going to sit here and say it's the worst thing in WWE. It's one of the best things in WWE. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's worthy television, right? It, it's one of the few things that I don't think sucks. Despite it being dragged out, despite it can be boring at times, you know, you've got Paul Heyman on a mic. It's not going to be that bad. And then I think Kevin Owens... I will say, out of the new generation of wrestlers, out of the wrestlers that have came into WWE over the past decade, I would say he's one of the better ones. Would you agree with that? I know I would agree with that, but... And then you've got Randy Orton, a Hall of Famer, star from the Ruthless Aggression era, so for me, this is, you're right, this is the, the best match going. I know it easily is, and it's a shame that I'm saying easily is, and there's nothing on the line, it's just a tag match. I mean, I get it, you don't even need titles, you don't always need titles, but it'd be better if there was, like, a stipulation here. No, of course it would be. What kind of stipulation could they add? I don't know. Loser leaves SmackDown, we'll just fuck the draft results after... Well, they're already beat anyway. Guy, with NXT's shenanigans, but anyway, let's move on. Anyway, yeah, let's move on, we're both going with... So who are are you going with? I'm going with the Bloodline. I'm going with the Bloodline. But I would not... Tommy Tonka will get the pin. I wouldn't be... Do you think they could debut a new member? They're a bit short with Jimmy being out. Is there any other... Blood Why light? did they boot Jimmy out, by the way? I don't know, but Nia Jax is on SmackDown. Now, I doubt she's going to get involved, but could she join the Bloodline? Might capsize the fucking boat like, if she <laughs> joins the Bloodline, but... Um... Is there any other Samoans on the roster? Not that I know. Do you think they would accept that half-ass fake Samoan Joe? Nah, he's in... He's an A. I would say TNA. He's an AEW. I can probably wish he's even TNA. After they watch his Joe Henry. Anyway, right, we're both going bloodline. Let's move into the next one. It is 
Tiffany Stratton versus Naomi versus Bailey Triple Threat Women's Championship on the line. Uh, so we started off with Tiffany beating Naomi. Then Tiffany took on Bailey. Then Naomi got a rematch after Tiffany didn't beat Bailey. So Naomi got a rematch and she beat Tiffany. And then we got Naomi taking on Bailey for the title. Tiffany got involved. And somehow that made it a triple threat. That doesn't seem... Tiffany Stratton got rewarded for interfering in a title match. By she got rewarded for by getting added to a triple threat. Working that doesn't it. seem right, does it? And we've got a face GM. Like, how does that happen? I I don't get it. No, what? No, no. Normally, how that would make sense would be if the heel was the champion and they interrupted a one-on-one match to determine their challenger, and then you've got the classic. Well, since because of you, we couldn't find a number one contender, they're both going to be getting a title. Yes or no? Yeah, that's the way to go, but not but this time. For some reason, Tiffany Stratton gets involved. She ruins the title match, and then she gets rewarded with a title shot. Make it make sense. All these people that say, oh, Tiffany's just cooking. That, that, that's the wrong ingredients. That's like cooking with a fucking cooker turned off. Aye. That doesn't make sense. He's cooking... Enough. He's he's stirring the pot and it's not getting warmer. Yeah, I I think Bailey's boring as fuck. Yeah. See, ever since, no, see this Bailey thing. Know what it reminded me of? It reminded me so much of um Sammy Zayn leaving the bloodline. I see when he was in the bloodline, he was. I don't know what. Yeah, he was over right, and the same thing with Bailey. Right, not over, not massively all right, but you could sympathise with them. They were getting pops, right? People were caring for them. But see, it's soon, see when Sami Zayn left the bloodline, see after that match with Roman Reigns, I knew after that, see, see when he won the belts, so kept. you knew it was going to be downhill for there. Because uh-huh. almost like, well, that's him finished it. And then with Bailey, it's like, see as soon as she got kicked out of damage control, see when she beat Eel Sky at Mania, I, I think you could see this boring face run coming a million miles away. No, of course you could, but Bailey's going to retain. You can't, you can't have that. You can't just have win at Mania and lose here. Well, back in the day you could, but now we, yeah, the, 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 the Triple H era, you, you need I, to give six months minimum. So. Hell, have Tiffany Stratton pin Naomi protects Bailey. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's like um, I don't know, like Triple H is WWE reign of terror. It's a bit like the UK justice system. You kill somebody six months minimum. That seems to be what he's like when you win the title six months minimum. I mean, come on, can we know if title changes quickly and stuff? I don't get it, but I'm going with Bailey as well. All uh, right, first world title match. That just sounds calling this a world title match. I'm going to defend Damian Priest. You know why? Because people are making out that if Jey Uso had the belt, things were so much better. You see, if it was Jey Uso defending against Damian Priest, you'd still have the exact same problem. It wouldn't be, oh, what a match this is. It's just, it's two guys that are mid-carders. The, the crowd can do the yeet thing, right? Damian Priest can be called the bisexual undertaker. By the way, bondage. That, Bondage, bisexual, whatever. That's not a flex. No, definitely not. No, it's not. So, <laughs> end of the day, this guy needs to... Well, in 2024, it might be like, but to any sane person... We is... are looking at the real fucking possibility troops that JD Madonna is going to get involved in the, the world, title. world title match, at paper. Right, you which say... Which is scary. You said it wouldn't make any difference. I agree that it wouldn't make any difference in terms of it would still be GSO versus Damien Priest. For a title. <laughs> it's not a title match. What I would say is so, I think GSO at this point is probably more deserving of being world champion than Damien Priest. Oh, well, absolutely. But I think GSO is cutting better promos than Damien Priest. But it's not going to change the product. Uh, I think GSO's had a better year than Damien Priest. No, well, he has, but... I think, I think GSO's but... higher up. But for me, he's still not a main offender. You're, right? you're not going to have two faces holding the world titles. And uh, I think that is what's holding Jay so back here. Is that really what's holding him back? Yeah. I think what's holding him back is he's just not going to fucking win it. So if Cody if, if Cody wasn't the champ, you'd think Jay was winning the night? I'd say there's way more chance of it, yes. Since when did that ever stop them back in the day having to... Yeah, we don't, I'm, we don't... I'm just going off by modern day logic. Well, hold, well, hold on. Modern day logic, Roman Reigns has held the belts hostage, so we, we don't know if they're allowed to have heel really? champs and face champs or whatnot. I don't know what it feels like. <laughs> Should be fucking grateful there's two world titles being defended on a pay per view that's not no. many. <laughs> when was the last time we got that? I don't know. It's not even a big four pay per view. That's not. But then again, the two title matches are definitely not big four worthy. No. 
They're not pay-per-view work. It doesn't feel like two world title matches. That's the problem. It feels like the Intercontinental and US titles are being defended. Yeah. No word they lie. See if you put the US belt on Priest and you put the Intercontinental belt on Cody, it wouldn't look out of place. No. It would look more in place. We see a decade ago, man. You're getting, even like, a decade ago wrestling was still shit, you're getting like Orton against Cena. You know what I mean? Even like, even like any fucking version of the Shield against each other or something. Triple H was still in the titles. Even Sigler against Del Rio. I don't know, it felt fucking better and bigger than this shit. Didn't it? It should have been me. Brock Lesnar, man. It's a shame. Anyway, who's it going to be? Priest or Jason? I'm going with Priest as well. Sorry, Jay. He's going to have his collar, Phil. No yeet. And then we move into the main event. It is Cody Rhodes versus the phenomenal AJ Styles. Look, could this be a phenomenal, pun intended, match? I mean, maybe, yes. This match is that forgettable. I thought that was us done. I thought that Priest was so much. was the last thing to talk about. I mean, look, this might be a good match, but at the end of the day, nobody <laughs> believes that AJ Styles has got any chance. No. And I, I just, I mean, AJ Styles, the way he's been booked, I just, I mean, no, nobody believed that AJ could beat LA Knight at Mania, <laughs> never mind fucking beat Rhodes for the world title. I know. Arguably, AJ didn't even deserve a WrestleMania match, considering how poor of a year he had up to that point. Yeah. And now he's the number one contender. No, I don't get... It's what... almost like Jinder Mahal getting the two shot t- see, that, see that two-on-two match, right, between the bloodline Orton and Owens? Why not... Um... Winners are guaranteed a title shot. Add a fucking stipulation like that in. Why not? But yeah, why not? The winning team takes on Cody Rhodes in a title threat match at Jedi. Yeah, there you go. And then when the bloodline win, it's it's Cody Rhodes defending. Two on one handicap match. Essentially, but it's, it's labelled a triple threat. <laughs> why not do that? And you can have the bloodline... You know, he can just he can just beat he can make Solo Sokoa forty six, you know. Yeah. Or zero forty six, whatever way you want to word it. Agreed. Uh could do that, could do that. Well, so- what happened the good old days when you got number one contendership matches at Peter Fee? LA Knight's doing fuck all, why can't he have a match against I mean he's even on SmackDown? Yeah. Well I think he's he's fe- I mean he, he Oh I want the King of the Ring. No you don't mate. Why do you want the King is King of the Ring so backwards? Like, so, he- some people made it work, but a lot of times it was cringe. He's not a king of the ring. I don't think he is. Nah, he's not. He's not got a personality a king. Doesn't act like a king. No. I, I, king Escobar? Is we really going to be subjected to that shit? No. Let's hope not. Oh. Anyway, I'm going with Cody oh, Rhodes. Good. King es- es- Escobar. Mm, it does. Right? Escobar. Sounds like a drug deal. Pablo. All right, well, there you go. Um, I'm going with Cody. I'm going to say au revoir. Uh, Cody will win. Aye, right, well, there you go, guys. Uh, bonjour. Au revoir. So this, this is a this is a missable pair if you've ever seen one. Aye, um, you'd think going to France they would try and give them a good show. Yep, but they're not. But they're giving them a. But you know what? It's probably that thing where they've never had one in France before, and they know that realistically WWE could put any card on and it's going to sell it. Yeah. That's that's just the way it is because WWE is a selling point, not the actual wrestlers. People need to realise that though with AEW when they went to Wembley. It's because Europe has been fucking starved of wrestling for decades. See, it's not because it's good, it's because it's been starved. See you see if AEW, right, decided to set up in the UK for a year and they were doing like monthly pay per views in the UK, you look at those attendance, they, they would fall. You think AEW could, could do Wembley every month or every couple of months? Yeah. Not a fucking chance. Yeah, no, we, we looked right at Clash of the Castle tickets that are in Glasgow. I mean, you're looking at 1600 on average for the two nights, across two nights. In America, they just couldn't do that because no one would fucking buy it. And it's like, when they go to the UK as well, right, you're going to be getting fans coming from Germany, France, Italy. Yeah. You're going to be getting all the European I fans. I see the Italian flags tonight at, at this. At so it's, it's not like you're not even catering to a country. You're gonna get you're gonna get fucking sad bastards that will take this opportunity to try and get to a show. So yeah, you know, is what it is. It's it's easy to go to a foreign market and and sell it because you you very rarely go there and and these markets are just starved of wrestling. Yep. If you were there every week though, we, these numbers would uh, soon dry up. But anyway, guys, that's it. We'll catch you for the um review tomorrow. Might do some reactions as well. Backlash, I believe, starts at five p.m. six p.m. Around that. We're in that time. So, yeah, we will see you then. I'd I, I prefer a 6 p.m. To start time. Football on beforehand. Aye, uh, me too. Anyway, guys, till next time. 
not a good pay-per-view, but we'll get through it, and we'll catch you tomorrow. So from Till then, peace.